Greetings and salutations, YouTubers. This is ZillaFan85 back today with my latest video for today. As the title suggests, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of share my thoughts on the latest Godzilla film, latest King Kong film that we've got, and of course the latest entry in the MonsterVerse, that of course being uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. So, like I said, I just wanted to give my thoughts on this. Uh, I don't really plan to go into crazy detail. This is not going to be any kind of in-depth review. Just kind of going over, you know, just a few things and giving my input on how I, you know, and what I thought of the film personally. Um, obviously, just doing this video on my own here because I did want to get this out to you guys. Um, if I do any kind of discussion video with any other YouTubers or anything, you know, that'll remain to be seen, you know, as a possibility down the road. But for now, just kind of kind of give you guys some, some of my thoughts and opinions here. Um, I, I could go into some spoilers, so do be forewarned about that. Um uh, you know, so I just kind of wanted to throw that one out there, but I'm not going to be going into too much, though. Uh, so as far as my thoughts on the film overall, I definitely thought it was a fun movie. Uh, I agree with what I've heard a bunch of other people saying about it is that it's kind of one of those very fun uh, popcorn flicks, if you will. You know, that, that's kind of where I would kind of place this this film. Um Definitely to me, I don't I don't enjoy it as much as the original version of King Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, that's, you know, very far up the list in my top 10 and, and you know, as far as my favorite Godzilla movies go. And, uh, you know, uh, one of my one of my favorite King Kong movies as well. So uh, this one doesn't quite live up to that uh, and maybe didn't live up to all the hype that it was getting either. Um, but it was a fun film, you know, it's just, it's not anything that's going to be kind of really deep story-wise or anything like that. And even though people say, well, you go into these kaiju movies not really expecting that, but at the same time, some of them do have really good compelling stories, so I don't really agree with that argument. Um, you know, some of them can be really cheesy and corny, but, you know, but whatever, though. Um... This had a pretty good pace to it. It was actually very quickly paced, maybe maybe a little faster than it needed to be. Uh, you know, the story heavily centers on Kong. Um, you know, you really kind of grow to feel for him in the film. Um, you know, and, and he's definitely an enjoyable character to watch. Um, you know, and of course, with this film, you're definitely watching for the monster action, which you're going to get plenty of. So I will definitely say that. Uh, the human characters are, you know, nothing to ride home about outside of, you know, what a lot of other people have said. The uh, the native Skull Islander girl, uh, Gia, I believe was the character's name. Uh, she is actually very, uh, very interesting to watch and very, very enjoyable. She's by far, in my opinion, the best human character of the film. You know, you kind of really, you know, feel for her and, and really get invested in her character. At least I kind of feel that way. Um, the other characters, though, were, yeah, like I said, just kind of there to move the plot along. You know, I can't really say anything that a lot of other YouTubers haven't already said about the film, uh, you know, because I kind of do agree with all of that. Um, you know, the way that they uh, that they portrayed some of some of the things in the movie as well was, uh, I don't know, it was kind of hit and miss, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the way they had Kong at the beginning of the movie basically barricaded on, on Skull Island like that actually kind of reminded me a little bit of Destroy All Monsters, the way that they had that sort of magnetic barrier around Monster Island or Monster Land, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it kind of was a little bit reminiscent of that, except this was actually a, f a physically built um you know, barrier around Skull Island, which I guess was to basically protect Kong from Godzilla so that Godzilla didn't sense him and come after him, at least as far as uh, what they were basically stating in the movie, you know. Um, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Though. It was interesting for what it was. And then, of course, we got Alexander Skarsgård char character, who was basically the main character of the film, um, you know, wants to... Uh, have Kong 
you know search or be able to uh, get into the hollow earth so that they can you know finally be able to touch into that that point that's been a very big driving point in the monster verse um and that was that was a cool concept to see it was very very science fictiony the way that they did all that um it was cool to see a lot of uh, like a lot of other people said a lot of neon lights going on and this and that um which was which was pretty uh which is very eye-catching i should say that's one thing with the film you know a lot of the shots in it were, were really really beautiful very very eye-catching in my opinion um but his character yeah is kind of this dorky scientist i think dr nathan lynn i believe was his character's name um you know he was okay like i said kind of just there to help drive the plot along um you know one one thing though i do like with alexander skarsgård not everybody has brought it up but he uh was also notab notably uh known for playing eric from uh from the show true blood uh which i ha happened to do you know to be a fan of i should say uh, other than i didn't really care for the last season but that's just me um but anyways though so i mean you know so there was really nothing to ride home about there um some of the other choices were a little odd too the fact that they had the the uh ren sarazawa character uh who was supposed to be the son of uh, ishiro sarazawa uh you know uh, from the other monsterverse films uh ken watanabe's character of course um so this ren sarazawa character was supposed to be the son of the late dr sarazawa and i don't know they it just didn't really add up to much though with his character being there they really didn't touch on him being the son of dr sarazawa as far as i remember from the film i've only seen it once but um i just don't really recall them really getting into that that much so the fact that he was there didn't really add up to a lot um you know but but again <laughs> just some odd choices um but anyway so you had so you had you know basically a couple different plot lines with uh, kong getting into the hollow earth and all that and and then exploring around the hollow earth that was with alexander skarsgård and the other you know people that he was with and of course the native girl gia um i don't know all the actors names and all that but you know so that was kind of the one plot line and then you had the other plot line with millie bobby brown's character and the people that choose with the guy with the with the podcast and then her friend as well and they were trying to see what the uh basically the evil corporation apex was up to because they figured that they were up to no good and of course that was later confirmed in the movie um <clears throat> but uh so you had that with them trying to figure out why godzilla was suddenly attacking which really ended up only being that he was attacking the apex facilities and that was of course due to apex creating surprise surprise mecha godzilla um which really is not a surprise because they uh you know it was it was pretty well known that mecha godzilla was in the film especially with all the toy leaks and everything um but uh you know but that was discovered in the film as to why uh godzilla was going berserk basically and really though destroying the apex facilities looking for mecha godzilla um and uh, with that you know too they uh they use the 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 skull of the severed head of king Ghidorah uh, to basically um you know sort of telepathically control mecha godzilla which you know that that's got disastrous uh you know uh, written all over it and of course um you know ren sarazawa was supposed to be piloting mecha godzilla but when the king Ghidorah skull kind of took over and went berserk i guess this uh sarazawa got fried i don't know if he was killed or not but um really either way it was just seemed like a total waste though the way that they did all that and then of course mecha godzilla went berserk at that point which came towards the end of the film um but uh you know but so they had all that going on now you have you know monarch which was built up uh, you know all all along in the monsterverse here was hardly shown at all i i really was kind of surprised about that how it took such a big back seat you know really the only monarch 
uh, point of contact that we had in the film was, uh, you know, Kyle Chandler's character. So, uh, Dr. Russell, um, but, uh, you know, but that, that was about all that you got with Monarch and really he had a very minimal role in the movie. So it was just, I don't know, just seemed like a lot of wasted potential here that they could have done, you know, as far as story wise goes, I know they wanted to focus on the monster action, but to me, you got to have a good combination of both though. Um, which I don't think they've really found that happy median in these uh, MonsterVerse films. To me, they just don't live up to the Toho films. But again, that's that's just to me. Uh, now, some of the other points, like when Kong, again, does travel into the Hollow Earth. Like I said, you had that whole science fiction-y thing going on. And the Hollow Earth itself was was a pretty cool concept. I liked it. I liked seeing some of the other monsters, like the Warbats and, and this and that, that showed up in there. And then, of course, that sort of reverse gravity area that that um that they showed when kong leap from the one uh you know uh from like the one mountainside to the other cliff side and then of course seeing that that inner air that like throne statue room area with the statue of one of kong's species there and how he got the axe with the godzilla spine um you know uh built on it uh, that that was pretty cool to see some of that stuff, um, you know, uh, seeing Godzilla destroy things. I mean, yeah, that's cool in a, in a perspective, but at the same time was, a, you know, just felt kind of out of place since he was built up as a protagonist all along, which I guess obviously he still really was. But, you know, once you find out what was going on, which to me was really a surprise to no one is the way that it played out was kind of what everybody had been saying all along. Uh, we were wondering, you know, a lot of us were wondering, including myself, if they were going to have it, that it was actually Mechagodzilla disguised as Godzilla attacking, you know, cities and this and that, um, you know, reliving that whole fake Godzilla that was portrayed in in the uh, original version of Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla from 1974. But they didn't they didn't go into that, which to me might have been a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Now, obviously, I still would have wanted to see Godzilla and Kong fight, you know, themselves. Not not Kong fighting fake fake Godzilla, you know, whatever. Um, but, um, you know, but they still could have maybe found a way to implement that, though, that Godzilla was being framed and this and that. And, you know, but I don't know. It's not the direction that they went in. But uh, this was the other direction and that people figured that Mechagodzilla was <clears throat> somehow connected with the skull of King Ghidorah, and that's why Godzilla sensed it was going after it, and that's what ended up being the case there. So, but anyway, though, so you had the initial fight between Godzilla and Kong on the uh, on that uh, freighter ship, which was really cool. Um, of course, didn't <laughs> you know going by phys by the law of physics and all that didn't add up that it, that that ship could have supported the weight of both of the uh, monsters on there, but it was cool to look at nonetheless. So, again, I guess it's one of those films you got to kind of shut your brain off to that. Um, and then, you know, and then, of course, the final showdown in Hong Kong, which was uh, really, really uh, cool looking to see, you know, especially, again, with all the neon lights and stuff that they were showing in the city and everything. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, heavily focusing on Godzilla and Kong going at it. Uh, but the pacing, though, was really, really fast and, and it was at times difficult to keep up with because it was, you know, it was it was really everything was really moving so quickly. You know, that's why, like, um, I don't remember who I was watching their video, but they said the way Toho does it is just, you know, really knocks it out of the park when they show their kaiju battles because they show it from like this wide angle uh, from, you know, a decent enough distance away that you can really take in the monster action and what's going on in the battles. So um, they they don't seem to have grasped the concept of doing it here with these films. So, I mean, at least we finally got a day fight, you know, like the angry video game nerd James Rolfe has always said, let's see them fight in the day. And we finally got that, um, you know, and then, of course, the night fight in Hong Kong was well lit. Uh, but again, it's just the pacing was so fast in that fight, though, that it was hard to keep up with. So. Uh, but then, of course, you got Godzilla defeating Kong, not killing him, but defeating him basically 
uh, and walking away. And then, of course, Mecha Godzilla emerging after he went berserk and, you know, beating the hell out of Godzilla. And then Kong gets revitalized uh, with that whole, you know, with that anti-gravity hovercraft thing that they were that Alexander Skarsgård used to um, revitalize Kong. And then uh, the native girl Gia convinced him, you know, because apparently he can do sign language in this film which is a weird thing but whatever um so anyway though so then she convinced kong to help godzilla and that's of course what they ended up doing and teaming up to take out mecha godzilla and kong again gets the final blow there with mecha godzilla and then of course you've got that sort of you know stare down between godzilla and kong after the battle is over with kong drops the axe that he had um and I guess, I don't know, it was a little little ambiguous. I'm guessing maybe it was a sign of mutual respect between them um, as they stared at each other in that, in that moment. And then Godzilla just turned away and went back to sea. And Kong ends up going to the Hollow Earth uh, to basically establish his, you know, kingdom down there, if you will. And that's basically how it went. I know that there were... Um, you know, a lot of people saying that there were spo was supposed to be an after credits scene and there was a lot of mix up between that, whether it was actually a, a scene that we did see in the movie that was uh, placed in an otherwise area in the movie um, and maybe like in the second act or something from what it sounded like, which doesn't make sense to me. But then other people were saying that there was going to be um, an instance showing aliens coming to Earth and the potential of maybe space Godzilla showing up. So that would have been really cool to see for sure. But um, obviously it's going to depend on if they're going to keep the monster verse going or not. So, um, you know, so that that's uh, that remains to be seen. The movie's made a lot of money, though. Um, so. I got to think Toho and Legendary Pictures are going to renegotiate the deal to keep it going. And hopefully so. Again, I, I, I for the most part, have enjoyed these movies. I enjoyed this movie for sure. Uh, it just didn't not, you know, totally knock it out of the park. Not in my opinion anyway, but it was a fun movie, though. So I definitely did enjoy it for sure. Uh, and that's about the best I can say, you know, I'm, I don't know as far as scaling on in like an out of 10 scale. A lot of people have said it's kind of in that six to seven out of 10 range. And I would I would probably kind of uh, put it at that, you know, it would probably just hit like the 20 spot on my Godzilla movie rankings list and and my Kong rankings movie list. Um, now it would probably be like six maybe five but i'm thinking probably more like around six and don't forget there's only nine <laughs> movies so uh, but that's kind of where it would fall for me but like i said i did enjoy it it was a very fun movie to watch and you know visually very very you know captivating very awesome you know, all the special effects work that they did. So I definitely did enjoy it. And, you know, for any of you who haven't seen it yet and are debating on it, it's definitely worth a watch. So I do highly recommend to go ahead and check it out. But just don't expect any Shakespearean level, you know, greatness for storytelling, though. You're, you know what I mean? So, um, but other than that, I think that that kind of covers, you know, my thoughts on the film. So with that, So that does pretty much take us to the end of the video here. Again, like I said, just kind of concluding, I did find Godzilla vs. Kong to be a fun movie, just um, not as as good as I was hoping for, but it was definitely a fun, enjoyable movie, and I do recommend it. Um, so that's just kind of my thoughts on the film, though, folks. Uh, you know, and if you have stuck with me, I didn't really intend to uh, speak about it this long, so I do apologize. But if you have stuck with me, I definitely do want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you would like to subscribe, please feel free to do so. If you would like to like and or comment on any of my videos, please feel free to do so as well. And just remember, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, you be good to yourselves and sayonara.